The Future's Price by Benny Henricks I moved into the apartment a few weeks before the semester began. Nice place for a student. Crappy place for a self-respecting citizen. Raycard had moved in the semester before and needed another tenant to help alleviate rent, so I obliged. There was no synergy between us, but no malice either. He toiled with his herbs and I with my crystals. Occasionally we'd breach the silence to report an exciting discovery to the other, but the flat was a pretty quiet place. Raycart trod hardly anywhere save the apartment, the campus, and the road between, and I must admit my venturings weren't much more extensive. It wasn't that I lacked friends, but rather that I lacked time and motivation. Crystallytics is one of the most intensive pathways, after all. You'll have little trouble, then, imagining my surprise when Rake came home late one day. Have you finally found yourself a girl mate? I asked, going for a healthy tease. Then he looked at me. No woman could have done it. His face, usually somewhat ruddy, was pale. The bags under his eyes darker, more pronounced. His eyes glistened and the whites were tinged yellow. Nay, said he. Not a woman. I, I went I went to the Samazions. Traded in good blood for good money. He held up two brass tabs and winced out a grin. That got me to wincing just as well. The Samadions were a group that obsessed with the body magics. They needed body bits to feed their addiction to finding new magics and fueling old ones. Rake had no sponsor to speak of. His pappy had been turned to stardust in the Ellipsis War. His mam had been a hypochondriac ever since. Relatives on both sides had disapproved of the marriage, so no mercy was to be found there. So I returned to my crystals, learning about producing food and healing by focusing the sun. The angles and cuts of it all are a nightmare. I didn't realize just how much mathematics lay behind the field, but that's water under the bridge. I could make us gruel at noon, but I hadn't learned too terribly much more. Rake gobbled it up. I think it was the only time he ate during the day. Except for when he snuck some of his herbs. The uni didn't take kindly to embezzling, though, so he only did that if they were to be thrown out. I visited the fam the weekend before the month turned and got my tabs for rent. When I turned up again at the apartment, Rake was lying on the bed, hands over his head. Two new brass tabs lay on our scarred table. You visit the Samadions again? I called out. All I got back was labor to breathing. He finally croaked a, Yeah. How much blood they take? I set my pack down on the bed. More heavy breathing. Enough to make rent. I rubbed my front teeth against each other. Glad to hear it, mate. You gonna be all right? He nodded. Don't worry, I'll get off the bed in a moment. No, think nothing of it, I said back. The initial agreement had been that I got the bed if I paid three out of five tabs a month. Raycard ended up falling asleep on the bed and missing his first class the next day. It hurt me a bit inside. Here was a lad trying to do his best, trying for all the world. And he gets fined. If you're on scholarship and miss a class, the uni makes you pay for it. Rake was bright enough to earn scholarship, but too blasted tired to extricate himself from slumbering that morn. How are you going to pay the fine? I asked that evening. He slowly shook his head, bags darker than I can remember seeing them. There's... <laughs> there's nothing. I'll have, I'll have to... He trailed off, glancing at his healing wrist. There's no more needed be said. He was going to have to return to the Smadions for another bleeding. At least the uni only charged him a chip and not a whole tab. I thought it was ludicrous. I did the math, and each class cost less than that, but there was no arguing the uni. Luckily, I could make gruel in a six-hour window now. We hadn't breached much into healing, though. I tried my hand on old Rake, but he was still a beaten cur. I'll have to go the start of the weekend and sleep until Monday, he said the next day. I nodded with apprehension, not wanting to acknowledge that he had spoken a fact. It crossed my mind, asking Pappy and Ma'am for the whole rent, but I knew they were strapped as was with six children. It was a blessing they could give me three tabs. There was the ever-so-distant option of selling myself to the Samatians, but there were 10,000 starving people in this city, and I couldn't dissect myself for all of them, could I? Well, the weekend came, and Rake left. He came back not three hours later with a smile on his face and a silver tab in his pocket. He also seemed to have gained a bandage around his right pinky finger. 
Turns out flesh and bone is worth more than blood, he said, holding up his wrappings. I gave him the little finger down to the first joint and got five months' worth of rent. He said it as if he had been promoted to the grand herbsman of the state. That's great, I said with false enthusiasm. It was hard to meet a mate cutting off part of his body with any enthusiasm, though. Guess what? I held up a small handful. I've just learned how to make bread. We rejoiced and dined like the pauper kings we were. There was less than a handful for each of us, but we knew I'd be able to make more the next day. You'd like to think it ended there. Maybe Raycart did splendidly and got more scholarship. Maybe here I was able to get a coveted uni position and bring in some steady money. Maybe a rich relative realized our plight and stepped in. What happened is the money didn't last. I don't know what I expected. Things came up. Raycart got falsely accused of stealing herbs, or so I hear from him. The magisters couldn't come up with anything conclusive, so they just find the accused and the accuser. Find them each a brass tab. What a load of rubbish that was. You gonna be able to make rent? I asked a couple months later. His eyes focused on not even the wall he stared at. Oh, I'll have to go back. Back to the Somatians. They'll, they'll take another spout of blood. I looked from his scarred wrists to his severed finger. Would another finger be worth it? He turned those baleful eyes upon me. Nay, digits have a much harder time growing back than blood. He stumbled through the door Friday at the gloaming. Twas then I realized my mistake in letting him amble alone. Rake uttered not a word but collapsed to the floor. I rushed to port him to the bed and supply him with a drink of water. Not all cities could afford running water, but we had enough ecologines to provide our populace with it. I tended to my flatmate for the next two days. He woke up a few times and ate. I tried to make as much bread as I could and give it all to him. I could make whole loaves now. I even let him have some of my cured ham. It was during these days that I started to think of him less as rake and more as wraith. The lad had little meat to his name and his motions were listless. Despite the fever he came down with, Rake dragged himself out of the house and made it to class that Monday. He worked on none of his homework that afternoon, just slept. A couple days later, the landlady came calling for the monthly dues. I handed her my three tabs and Rake patted himself all over for his. They were nowhere. By the seventh flame, I know what happened, he said in revelation. I was robbed on my way back home on Friday. I, I was just too delirious to remember it. His gaunt eyes flitted to the lady. If you give me grace, I'll have the money within a week. She looked at the diminishing man, the desperate tones of his voice playing an elegy in her ears. You've a week, son. I wouldn't be so strict but for the utilities, etc. They'll pinch us off the waterline if I miss payment. The lady left and Wraith dropped to his knees. Oh, merciful skies. Who was I kidding coming to school? They gave you scholarship, I reminded him. It's not everybody who's bright enough for that. He looked up at me with dying eyes. You remember the herbs fiasco? Well, the magisters are thinking of pinching my scholarship down to probationary level until I can corroborate good behavior. No, I breathed. The filth. But I can't quit now. His head drooped to rest on his chest. I'm nearly to my third year. I, I only have a year left till I'm certified herbalist. If I drop out, I'll have to become some sort of filth raker. No one wants to take a failure. You, we... I trailed off, appraising his waxy gaunt features. Reckoning out some numbers in my head, it was clear that the Somadion silver was a sliver shy of a probationed scholarship. Unless Wraith was willing to part with a smidge more than a pinky joint. The stump fist herbalist had an endearing ring to it. What'll you do then? Old Wraith gazed at the floor his shoulders rising and falling more heavily than was fit for someone his size. I... Uh, I'll just have to go back. He closed his eyes and gulped at a nasty lump of gloom, a sound both chalky and damp slurking from his throat. Raycart, I licked my lips. Are you sure? You really can't think to cover all the remaining semesters with somatic donations. It'll end up costing you an arm and a leg. He stared at his hand whilst flexing the fingers and turning it over. 
After a marrowless pause, he whimpered, Yeah. And so he went, trudged on out the door, eyes never leaving the ground. I assume he didn't even look up as he walked in the Samadion's lacquered door, probably didn't even cry out when they set to him with their knives. His expression was just the same when he drug himself back into the apartment. By the seventh, I exclaimed, offering him the modicum of meat I had conjured up during his absence. The whole arm. You gave him the whole damn arm. He nodded as he dropped a purse of tabs, chips, and notches on the table. The whole damn cursed arm. Hid the money better this time so I wasn't waylaid. Suppose being a little more lucid helps some as well. He accepted the meat and devoured it smartly. I marveled at his devotion to education and poked at the leather bag of bits. How much did they do you for, then? Though his eyes broke away from the floor for the first time and jumped to the bag, they stayed completely devoid of mirth. Sixteen tabs, ten chips, and two notches. All silver. I whistled as I ran some numbers in my head. My time spent on crystallytics had turned me into a regular calculating machine. A mighty sum, that. It'll bear you through, let's see, all of next semester, including rent. I smiled. He didn't. Yep. His eyes had returned to the floor. Sounds mostly right. My smile faded as I realized where his thoughts lay. What do you do for the last two semesters? Raycart's eyelids slid closed, and he shuddered. I wonder if he might expire right then, but they came open again. I'll find something. I'll find something. An ominous force settled itself around my shoulders, for I knew what that something would be. Time served to prove my intuitions were awry. One semester rolled into the next, and just a month before Raycart's silver ran dry, he nabbed a position at the university. I doubt I'll ever see someone as joyed as the time that giddy man came floating through the door and hugged me. The last time he had touched another human had probably been his mother spanking him for some childhood transgression. The job was just janitorial, but it was equable enough to combine his somatic exploits to bloodletting alone. He would be able to emerge an herbologist with the majority of his limbs. Or so I thought. Time, it would show, wasn't finished with my intuitions. Months slipped by as my emaciated flatmate slipped off periodically to divest himself of as much blood as the meager meat around his bones would allow. Between scholastic efforts, custodial duties, and selling his vital fluid to be boiled, infected, atomized, tinctured, pulpicized, invived, glastricated, calced, and umbrated, Rake had never looked more like a wraith. Moved and talked like one, too, if he spoke at all. Though the pity never went away entirely, Raycart's worries trickled from the forefront of my mind as time passed. For the first time since I'd known him, he had some sort of control of his life. I would have been heartened by it if I had not had so many frustrations with opening new cuts on my arms and trying to sear them anew. The idyllic state of things was swept away with a chilly breeze as Wraith opened the door late one winter's eve. I awoke from the small-scale commotions spawned in the draft to see his silhouette shut the door, then slump to his knees. Raycart? I spoke into the dark room. You fine and all over there? He prefaced his reply with half a minute of ragged breaths. I am done for. I cast the blanket aside and lit a crystal. Say what? The skeletal man didn't raise his face from the squalor of the floor. I squeezed tight as he said, Someone broke a window, and the magistrates are fighting me for it since it was during my shift. What? I leapt up and set to pacing. That's unacceptable. How much is it? Not more than a brass tab, surely. And I cracked open. It was the window in the Gimpset building. My blood ran like sleet in my veins and all the worries that had been trickling away poured into the forefront of my mind. The stained glass? He nodded. The jewel of Tusco? He nodded. You're done for. I pictured the crystal-crafted 50-foot masterwork that had even been talked about in my home village hundreds of kilometers away. 
by the seventh flame. How, how much? He shook his head. I couldn't say how much the whole window is. I have to pay fifty silver tabs. Fifty? I stopped. They can't be half serious. That isn't a mite your responsibility. They're, ch they're, uh, they're charging the guard a hundred silver tabs, and the rest from the smasher whenever it is they catch him. It seemed those ignominious whore beasts at the tippy top of the university made up for their lack in logic and mercy with stubborn resolve. Only their level of stuck-up could bury a high-performing student under a cascade of punishments for imagined infractions. 150 silver teas as a base cost. But I suppose knowing the little that I do about crystallytics, I can see how something that intricate could carry such a skyscraping price tag. Cavanaugh's glass is far from the easiest glass type to glimmer, but how did anyone break it? Only known substances that can shatter it are Tarsus glass and Cavanaugh's glass itself, unless a new grade has been discovered. My mind wandered from Raycart's plight as I considered the possibilities of a novel glass grade. He looked up at me, the eyes of a beggar sunken in his face. Could you, maybe... I held that supplicating gaze only a moment before breaking off and looking toward the kitchen. I'm... I'm not sure, Rake. His hopes died quicker than a desert breeze. I... That's all right, I guess... I... I, I guess I'll... I'll make my own way over to the Somatians. His breaths came uncertainly. See... See how much I can get for this... For this leg. He patted his right knee. I wanted to say something, anything, but my tongue found no words for the misfortunate prostrate. And so it was, once the weekend came, Rake headed off to the body fanatics. I, of course, made sure he took my walking stick with. It wouldn't do to have him hopping back like a one-legged rabbit. I waited, devoting my time to healing more self-inflicted wounds, deeper and more extravagant. It wasn't until the following evening that Wraith came stumbling back again. You took a minute or two getting back, I said as he came in, appraising the tied-off pant leg dangling under his right hip. Yeah. He slumped into a chair at the table. You, um, you want the bed? I offered. I have a bit of food as well. Glimmered it down from the sun myself. He stalked over to the bed and fell atop it. I watched for a few minutes before asking, So, how much did they do you for this time? He spoke without opening his eyes. For the leg, I got forty silver teas. I raised my eyebrows, impressed. I'd never seen that much money all at a time before. That still leaves you a few shy there, Rake. Yeah. He pulled out a new leather purse. Since I've been such a stalwart patron, they agreed to give me the remaining ten on good faith. I'll have to go in and let blood for a few years... To pay that back, he shuddered. I, I hate this. Not knowing what to say, I nodded in silence. I hate everything, and everything hates me. I'm not going to be able to keep my janitor job now. I can't get any money from the Samadions for nearly four years. He started to sob. I only have one semester left. I bit back any reply of saying that he still had ten fingers and toes that the Samadions would gladly accept. I also refrained from saying anything too comforting, like I would help him get through the last semester. Even if I was able to take up the reins at his custodial position, that wouldn't cover his tuition. Crystalliers can grow limbs back, right? He looked to me with hungry, sanguine eyes. The Samadions have a crystallier who patched my amputations right up. Now, Rake... It's a bit more difficult than you're imagining. Sure, we can grow back what you've lost, but it takes the better part of an hour to sear back just a millimeter of arm. A whole hour for the leg. Just the arm would take some 800 hours. And I guarantee it ain't the cheapest or pleasantest 800 hours of your life. Probably total up just a bit more than what them Smadions paid you for. The only answer my explanation got was another bout of weeping. 
The new week rolled around, and Raycart didn't keep his janitor job for any sizable portion of it. Kept the Somation money for just about as long. He stopped going to class, choosing instead to waste away on the bed while I wasn't using it. I attempted conversation a time or two, but he preferred the silence of despair. The start of the next week is when the first truancy fine came tacked onto our door. I handed it to my gaunt flatmate, and he crumpled it up with hardly a glance. I raised an eyebrow, but strolled over to the window to glimmer up a sandwich. The same ritual happened the next week, Rake showing he didn't have much of a mind for the magister's fines. I thought he couldn't possibly get any more ghastly, but the next week he proved me wrong when his bony fingers crumpled up the most recent fine notice. Rake, I said, you might want to take a look at that one. Says that if you don't make at least a minimum payment before the next week, they'll be here to take you. The orbs in his ashen face rolled forward to meet me. He regarded me with those sparkless spheres for a while, then defocused and let his lids slide down once more. I didn't quite understand this singular fellow. His looks, odors, and noises all told the tale of a dead man, but somehow he still moved. Maybe it would be good for the magisters to take him away. I was sure there was something to be learned from studying this walking, lame contradiction. It was the day before the weekend. I wandered home after a boring day of classes, still going over the crystal setup in times of day needed to craft Lichty's glass. Upon entering our single room, something felt askew about the air. Can't say what it was. Nothing looked any different than it had for the past three weeks. Smells were about the same level of putrid. Regardless, something wasn't all the way right. I walked over to Raycart and gave his shoulder a jostle. Hey. Nothing. Oh, by the seventh flame. The curse didn't come from surprise at his death, but rather as a matter of propriety. On the bed and everything. You've probably filled your britches as well, haven't you? A stew of herbs sitting on the table told me that old Wraith probably hadn't been as immobile as he had been putting on. It also told me I should toss it out as soon as possible. I pitched the poison down the drain and turned to the body. Well, Wraith Cart, what to do now? I suppose writing your mother isn't the worst idea, but she'll never get here before decay takes you over. Leaves it on me to take care of your body. The letter could wait. Removing the corpse couldn't. I hoisted his modest mass over my scholar's shoulder and made for the streets. Looks of plenty came my way, but no one bothered to comment. If you had walked the streets of Tusco, you had learned that raising concerns about strange sights was too time-consuming a practice to keep up. It took longer than I would have liked, but eventually I pushed my way through the desired lacquered doors. A man at the table in the entry hall waved me over as I came in. And what have we here, sir? The older receptionist peered at the body through his round spectacles. Ah, already donated lower extremitas dexter and upper extremitas sinister. Yes, we have been expecting to see Master Raycart back soon. The corners of his mouth pulled up in a superficial smile. If you'll deposit the body on this stretcher, sir, we'll be right to business. I nodded and laid my former flatmate on the flap on the floor, reminding myself to scour my hands with a crystal later. All right, then, let us see. The receptionist appraised the fresh corpse, his head tilting this way and that. Less twelve for the arm and forty for the leg. I believe our friend Raycart also had an outstanding sum of ten silver tabs here with us. So that's... One hundred and sixty-five silver tabs, sir. Does that sound amenable? Oh, would you prefer to port the body away? I nearly swooned at the sum. No, I do believe I'll take the tabs. He flashed a mirthless smile again and retreated to a back room. He returned with two assistants to bear the body in a thick purse. Here you are, Master... Glist. Avar Glist. Master Glist. One hundred and sixty-five tabs. He handed the money off. I hope you have an excellent day. I wished him the same and strode off, stroking my hoard of coin. There were still six months on the lease. Did Raycart really think contracts were so easily weaseled out of? Besides, 
he wasn't the only one with tuition problems. The End <laughs>